What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another crypto video. What is up guys it's time for Dylan back at it again with another electronics tutorial of course we are continuing on with our Elegoo R3 Uno most complete starter kit in the universe and we're doing lesson eight today where we're going to talk about the tilt ball switch but before we get started I just want to show you this awesome song that I was able to create based off of the last lesson so I think it's kind of funny if you guys have ever played RuneScape you definitely know this song so let's go ahead and upload it Dun, 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 dun. If you guys recognize that song, it's Sea Shanty. Now, if you guys want to take a picture of the code, there it is. You guys can see it. Take a picture because you're not going to be able to find this online. I had to sit here and painstakingly find each note plus the duration. It was a little tedious, but it was a lot of fun. And now I know how to play Sea Shanty on my uh, R3 Uno. Uno R3 with the uh, passive buzzer. So pretty cool, pretty cool. But anyway, continuing on with our lesson, lesson number eight, where we're going to talk about the tilt ball switch. So basically in this lesson, we're going to learn how to use a tilt ball switch in order to detect small angles of inclination. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. For the components, we're going to need our Elegoo Uno R3, the tilt ball switch, and then of course, two female to male jumper wires. So of course, without further ado, we are going to crack into our box. Now, as you can see, I already have my Uno R3 out. I still had it plugged in from yesterday. So we are pretty much almost done. We have our two jumper cables. If you've left it connected, we have our Uno R3 sitting right there. We just need to put our passive buzzer away and get out one of these tilt ball switches. So my guess is it's probably in the same exact box. So it looks like this is the piece. It does look a little bit different from the picture. However, this is definitely it. And how I know it is because if you shake it, you can hear a little ball in there. This is what it looks like. And if you can tell from the photo, this sucker, this sucker has gold or copper wires, whatever that is. I'm pretty sure it's either copper, but it's gold color. And this is the only one in there that has gold or copper colored wires. You might not be able to pick it up because I have a green screen and I'm counseling out the green. So you might not be able to pick it up. But I've looked in here and there's only one of these shaped items that has the gold. So it's definitely this one. So one more gain. Let's take a look at it. This is it right here. It does say HDX, but it has AE at the front. So a little different from the picture, but that's okay. So we have all our devices. Let's go ahead and put our box to the side. Boom. And let's read on. Let's see. Tilt centers, uh, sensors, tilt ball switch, allow you to detect orientation or inclination. They are small, inexpensive, low power, and easy to use. If, pro if used properly, they will not wear out. Their simplicity makes them popular for toys, gadgets, appliances. Sometimes they're referred to as mercury switches, tilt switches, rolling ball sensors, blah, blah, blah. They're usually made up of a cavity of some sort. Cylindrical is popular, though not always, with a conductive free mass inside, such as a blob of mercury or rolling ball. This one, as you can tell, it has a little ball in there. You can hear it. Let's not do that too much. We don't want to break it. So... One end of the cavity has two conductive elements, poles. When the sensor is oriented so that the end is downward, the mass rolls onto the poles and shorts them, acting as a switch throw. While not a, as precise or flexible as a full accelerometer, tilt switches can detect motion or orientation. Another benefit is that the big ones can switch power on their own. Accelerometers, on the other hand, output digital or analog voltages that must be, then be analyzed using extra circuitry. So this is what the schematic looks like. It looks like we have D2 going to the positive side and we have another side going to the ground. Scrolling down, this is the wiring diagram. After wiring, please blah, 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 blah. And there it is. So 
it seems as though this device can be wired either direction because um, it doesn't seem as though there's a positive and negative side. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and wire this thing up. All we're going to need to do is just switch our red cable from the 8 pin to the 2 pin. Boom. And then connect both of these to our device. Boom and boom. And of course, so you guys can see, we have the black going to, into ground, red going into two, and then of course, just plug it in. It looks like you can plug it either way. So just to confirm, I did happen to look it up, and where is it? I know I saw it right here. No fixed positive or negative side, so it really doesn't matter. Just to confirm so we don't break anything. <laughs> Anyway, coming back over to our lesson, what we need to do now is just upload the code. So go to the same spot as always, wherever you put your folder for your PDF, whether you did it from online or from the CD, just go ahead, find your folder, English, code, lesson eight, ball switch, boom, open this sucker up, we can close this, we can close that, boom, and here we go. So what is this thing going to do? Cool, so it looks like what we're going to do with our code, because as you've learned, we're no longer showing us, <laughs> it's no longer telling us what the code is doing, and that's okay, because we can figure it out now. So what we're doing is we have our constant int LED pin, which is attached to pin 13. In the setup, we're setting up the pin mode, pin, uh, sorry, the LED pin, which is pin 13. We're gonna have it set to output, Pin mode two is going to be input, and that, as you guys can tell, is the same pin that we plug this sucker into, pin two. So pin two is going to be for the output, as we can see, and digital write two is going to be high. So as we've learned, the digital write high means on, low means off. So in our loop, what we're going to do is we're going to loop through we're going to set the digital value from this read function, right? Which is coming from two, pin number two. We're reading the value of this particular ball switch. So if the ball switch happens to be on, it's going to set the digital value to high. If it's off, it's going to set it equal to low. So when it's on, right? high equals on, when digital val is on, when it gets the on signal from the read switch, which is on pin number two, it's gonna run this line of code, which will do what? It will write to the pin 13, a low signal, which means to turn it off. Otherwise, it's gonna write to the LED pin, which is pin 13, a high signal. So let's go ahead and plug this sucker in. It's plugged in and we're gonna run this code. So let's see what happens. I'm very interested to see what happens. Making sure your connections are good. This is what we look like. So let's go ahead and deploy the code. Make sure you select the correct board in port as well as on the board switcher and click upload. Very cool. So, so the way, very cool. So the way this works is when we tilt this up, we have the LED on. When we tilt it down, we have the LED off. So when we tilt this thing up, what happens is the ball falls down, which breaks the connection. So that ball, kind of, I, I'm guessing, kind of acts sort of like a resistor. It has so much resistance that it does not let the electrical current continue through to the other pin meaning that we have a signal coming from digital read at pin two of low. In that case, if the digital read function is returning a low value, we are turning the LED on, which is why when you look at the code, right here, digital val, when it's high, meaning we have a connection, we're gonna turn the light off. When this value equals low, we're gonna execute this line of code which turns the LED on. So it's a little backwards. I would like to do that the opposite way. 
So let's see it again. When we tilt this sucker up, it's breaking the connection between the two wires, which is sending a low signal to the digital read function, returning that into uh, our integer called digital val. And then when we run it through our if statement, since it has a low function, it completes the else block of code, which will turn the LED on. When we tilt this sucker down, it's con completing the connection, which is sending a high value returned from digital read at pin number two. When it does that, it executes the if statement. The if statement, which sends a low signal to digital write, which turns off the LED. So a little backwards, I would like to have this the other way. However, it's cool that it works. What would be cool, and I'm probably going to make this video before I do lesson number nine, because that's pretty much it for today's lesson. We just see how this thing works. Um, what I want to do in our next lesson is I want to make this so that when we complete the circuit, right, when we complete the circuit and the LED turns on, boop, boop, maybe it produces a sound from the passive buzzer, or maybe uh, maybe we'll turn on an LED light from uh, our breadboard. So I want to start connecting everything we've been learning into more comprehensive lessons other than these very simple lessons that just show us how to actually complete and use these items. So it's cool that we now know how to use this, but what I want to do is I want to take it a step further and start integrating everything we've learned together. Because we now know how to use a ball switch, we now know how to use a passive buzzer, an active buzzer, we know how to use LEDs with switches to turn them on and off, we know how to use RGB LEDs, so we know a lot. Let's start building some sick projects together. We can do it. But that's all we have for you today. Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are awesome. Make sure you guys smash the like button, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys want me to show for you guys, How you, what projects you guys want me to build for you guys. You guys have a beautiful day, beautiful night, wherever you guys are. Dylan is out.